Hello and welcome to the phone line and online worship from Lindsay Old and a very warm welcome to all friends and visitors who are worshipping with us. We cannot be physically together but we're all joined as one through our common humanity and also our faith and our love of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The latest news from our church communities can be found on Lenzi Old website and also our church Facebook page called Lenzi Old Church. So let us now take a moment of quiet as we focus our hearts on God. Let us pray. God of life and love, we gather before you bringing all that we are, all we have been and all we hope to be. We come before you knowing that you honour our worship and you delight in the time we set aside to worship you. God of love and life, we praise you for the beauty and the wonder of our world, for the sweet scent of roses, the purple heather on the moss, the grandeur of mountain and the vastness of loch. God of love and life, we praise you for family and friends, for caring neighbours and supportive colleagues. We praise you for all who bring joy into our lives, whose words bring healing and comfort to us, whose caring brings hope, whose acts of kindness bring strength and support. God of love and life, we praise you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came into our world and showed us your love and taught us your wisdom. We praise you for our Lord Jesus Christ, who opened our eyes to the signs of your kingdom all around us, whether on a bird or a tree or a lily in a field. We praise you for our Lord Jesus Christ, who stilled the storm and brought calm to turmoil, who healed the sick and raised the dead. And we praise you for the promise Christ brought, the promise that love is eternal, life is everlasting, and all hope is ours. God of love and life, as we worship you this day, forgive us for all the things that we have done which are wrong. and touch us in a special way. Rekindle the fire of faith deep in our belly, refresh and reinvigorate us to work for you, and redirect us to the many ways in which you guide us each day. And we ask all this in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, when he lived on this earth, he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. David will now read our Bible reading this morning and it's from Hebrews chapter 11 and it's verses 1 to 16. So it's Hebrews chapter 11 and it's verses 1 to 16. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 16. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. 
And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he is, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading of his word, and to his name be all honour, glory and praise, now and for evermore. Amen. As we move out of lockdown, we seem to live in a world where we oscillate between hopes raised and hopes dashed and hopes raised again. One example being that we've seen in the news this past week is of our young people's exam results, where downgraded results were recently scrapped and all our young people receive new grades based solely on teachers' estimates. Hopes raised, hopes dashed, and then raised again. Or holidaymakers enjoying a well-earned break in Spain or Italy or Croatia, only to find that once they've been there for a few days, they have to return home quickly to avoid having to quarantine for 14 days. Hopes raised and dashed, then raised again. And then we think of the people of Aberdeen, of Leicester, of Blackburn, just getting used to being able to see family and friends again, only to find themselves in some form of local lockdown. At the moment, we seem to be living in a sort of a limbo, an in-between world of hopes raised and then dashed and then raised again. For we are living in the midst of a pandemic, not seen since the Spanish flu of 1918. And when we find ourselves struggling or feeling exhausted with the hopes raised and dashed then raised again, we need to remind ourselves what it is we are actually living through. This is not a normal time and we need to be kind and understanding to ourselves. And we also need to have faith. As the writer of Hebrews says, we need to have faith which is sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, for this is what the ancients were commended for. This is what the ancients were commended for. The ancients, the ancients of the Old Testament, who lived so much simpler than we do, who kneaded bread with their bare hands, who crushed grapes with bare feet to make wine, who took pleasure in life's simple delights. The ancients who had no clocks, but understood time in relation to the moon and the stars and the sun. The ancients who lived in a steady rhythm of work and rest and Sabbath. The ancients who lived in unpolluted worlds who, like Abraham, could look up to the night sky and see thousands of bright stars and know that God was with them, that God had created this, and that God would bless them. 
the ancients who, like Noah, heard the voice of God in their dreams and took risks and built arks in obedience. The letter to the Hebrews was written by a leader to the early Christian church, perhaps it was to a church in Rome, which was suffering from persecution because of their allegiance to the crucified Christ. And as a result, some early Christians were losing their loyalty and commitment to church life. And the writer begins in chapter 11, reminding them of the faith of the ancients who had gone before them. And that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. see. Faith is not something that we can prove to someone else with scientific or mathematical equations. It can't be seen with the human eye. Instead, it dwells within our hearts. Faith is experiential. It is part of our being, our soul, our inner life. And the writer then lists in the rest of the chapter those in the Old Testament who had faith and hope in what could not be seen and remarkable things happened. For by faith we are told that Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they recognised that he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith we are told the people passed through the Red Sea on dry land. By faith the walls of Jericho fell. By faith Daniel survived the lion's den. Perhaps for us all just now, by faith for us is just getting through another day in the midst of a pandemic. Another day of what seems to be hopes raised, hopes dashed and hopes raised again. But like the ancients, lockdown made us all aware of the simple pleasures and the rhythms of life. We were forced to live less constrained by the clock. Perhaps some of us needed bread or crafted or created with our hands. Perhaps we found greater joy in nature and we noticed much more deeply the rhythm of spring give way to summer. Perhaps we too took the time like Abraham to gaze up into the night sky and wonder at the countless stars shining brightly and recognise the Creator's hand. Perhaps for some of us lockdown has rekindled within us a faith, a new faith, even if it is as small and fragile as a mustard seed. Perhaps we sense a new sense of faith being reborn within us, a tiny light which is flickering and bringing hope in our darkness. We cannot prove it to anyone scientifically because it is experiential. It's something deeply personal and we feel it deep down in our heart. It is becoming embedded within our soul and as a result we are experiencing a reawakening and discovering a new and exciting and a rich inner life. As we live through this pandemic, when we are, our hopes are being raised and dashed and then raised again, we have amidst this, this faith. And like the early Christians, we can find comfort and strength and hope in the letter to the Hebrews. For despite the uncertainties around us, whether it be uncertainty about health or jobs or family life or the future, we can take comfort in a deeper dimension of living, in this unseen reality of our faith, in a God who is forever with us, who created us, who loves us, and who cradles and soothes us through this pandemic and the subsequent life challenges which arise. A God who still whispers to us, as he did the ancients, who still speaks to us in dreams and visions and the quiet utterings of our hearts, calling us, calling us like Noah, to build the arks, even when others think it's foolish. Calling us like Moses' mother to 
find the faith to make a basket to keep her son safe. Calling us like Abraham to gaze on awe at the countless stars in the night sky and like Daniel to discover that even amidst the uncertainty of a lion's den, we discover safety when we have faith. Just as the writer of the Hebrews wrote to encourage the early Christians who found themselves in a world of hopes raised and hopes dashed and hopes raised again, so may this letter, this chapter, become words for us today who find ourselves living amidst a pandemic. For faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I am further reminded of the words of a song I used to listen to when I was a young nurse and was fearful and afraid and lacked confidence in my work. And sometimes I wondered where God was. And this song brought me comfort. And it reminded me that faith is unseen. It's experiential. It's what we feel in our heart. And the song is called That's What Faith Must Be and it's written by a Michael Card and the chorus says these words. It says, Faith is to hear with my heart, to see with my soul, to be guided by a hand I cannot hold, to trust in a way that I cannot see. That's what faith must be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us now bring our prayers for others before God. Let us pray. Lord God, we are living in such uncertain times amidst this coronavirus pandemic. We plan and then find our plans have to be changed. We hope and find our hopes dashed. We look to the future as a church and as a people, but the future is hazy and unknowable. But throughout all of this uncertainty, you remain the same. From the beginning of time, as your spirit hovered across the darkness, you have been with us, speaking, guiding, loving, strengthening, your people throughout the ages, speaking to them in dreams and visions. From ancient times, you have accompanied your people and you continue to accompany us now, calling us to have faith and believe in what is unseen, to trust this truth which dwells within our heart, to listen faithfully to the echoes of your voice, to take heed or your guidance in our dreams, and to recognise your reality in the face of another. And so this day, Lord God, we pray for your church. We pray for your church, which feels it's in exile, parted from its buildings, forced to worship out with its sanctuaries. We pray for your church, uncertain of what the future will hold, but certain of your goodness and truth. We pray for your church, a people separated through pandemic, but joined together as one through your Holy Spirit. Be with your church in the days ahead, as buildings open in the coming months. And may our churches be safe spaces for worship to take place, for community groups to meet, for friendships to be nurtured, for laughter and joy to be shared, for tears to be shed and happy events to be celebrated. Lord God, this day we pray as well for those who are anxious and afraid due to COVID. And as lockdown continues to ease, are finding it very difficult to venture out of the house for fear of catching the virus. 
We pray for those for whom being in lockdown has affected their mental and physical well-being. Those who, due to lockdown, have become ill due to a reluctance to bother the medical staff and seek medical help. We pray for those unable to attend their normal social groups and activities and have felt terribly isolated. And we pray for those who have had treatments delayed and medical procedures cancelled. Lord God, we pray this week for those who work in our cafes and restaurants who have been exceptionally busy this past month due to the Scottish Government set out to help scheme. Grant them strength and we pray for all hospitality staff as they work hard to re-establish some pleasure and normality to our lives, allowing us to dine out and to meet family and friends. And Lord God, we pray for those who are concerned about job security, who may face redundancy after furlough ends. And as we all become aware of the increased social, physical and mental needs which have arisen due to lockdown. Help us to support one another, to be extra kind to one another in what could be difficult months ahead. And Lord God, we pray for those who have lost a loved one, whether due to COVID or due to the effects of lockdown or other reasons. May they be comforted with precious memories and your promise of life everlasting. And may they know their loved one is held forever safe in your arms until we meet again. And in the next few moments of silence, we bring before you our own personal prayers and concerns, knowing that you're here and that you care. Lord God, as we journey into a new week, help us to recognise the unseen reality and truth of our faith and to sense that invisible hand which forever grips ours, leading us on in life and into newer and deeper experiences of your amazing truth. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before the closing benediction, I thank you for joining with us today, whether it's through our phone line or watching online. And for those watching online, we extend also our thanks to David and Jill for their musical contributions and also to David, our cameraman. So go now in faith, knowing that amidst this uncertain time of pandemic. God is with you. God will support you. God will guide you. God will give you new hope. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen.